grew up in a very traditional family in Albania. They allowed me to go to college and there I fell in love. But my family wanted me to marry someone else, so my boyfriend and I ran away to Rome. And I rang my family, but they disowned me. In Rome, my boyfriend became a different person, not loving, saying I belonged to him, forcing me to perform sexual acts. Then one day, he left and never came back. Another man came to the hotel room with a gun and told me that he paid my boyfriend 3,000 euros for me and that if I didn't go with him, he'd kill me. He moved me to the UK and I was forced to, to have sex with whoever he told me to. So many different men in different flats. We were constantly being moved around. There was a number of girls with me, but no one from Albania, no one spoke my language. We lived in terrible, cramped conditions, and some of us got pregnant from the sex, and I was forced to see more and more clients in filthy bedrooms, and I had nowhere to go. No clothes except for the sex worker clothes. And I felt so ashamed, abandoned by my family, betrayed by my boyfriend, and working seven days a week like an animal, no phone, no ID, and he told me that I would get in trouble if police finds me. And then in January 2018, a police raided the house, and I didn't even know which part of the UK I was in. They took me to the safe house and I received medical attention for the injuries I received as a slave. Now I, I slowly start to rebuild my life. I can't forget the past, but I hope for a future. The extent of sexual exploitation and the extent of modern slavery happening currently in London is quite eye-opening. There are probably tens of thousands of people who are selling sex um, across the UK. And for sure, we know that we have met women who we strongly suspect are victims of modern day slavery um, or perhaps have been trafficked. How is a woman lured into ending up in prostitution in another country. Quite often what's happened is they've thought they were going for another sort of job and ended up being brought and brought into prostitution. The extremes that exploiters and perpetrators of modern slavery go to is astonishing. I have worked with women who fell in love with a man and were in relationship with with the said man for three to four years before they decided to commit and get married and then they moved to Europe. And that's when they were exploited. They were sold by their husband to brothels. They aren't all from poverty. Some of them have come from what would be considered fairly wealthy families in their own countries, but they still managed to get duped into coming here and get exploited. Some have turned up and can speak four languages. I've also worked with a, a young woman, a survivor of sex trafficking who holds a master's in chemical engineering. I've also worked with two women who had MBAs. Every story is different. The only way that slavery is going to end is if society as a whole gets together to do their bit, whether it's the public, the police, the government, charities, NGOs. We recognise that as a charity. Um, we're, we're, our teams may actually be among the first actually to suspect that we could be coming across somebody who um, is in a very difficult situation and needs speedy support. Finding out about modern slavery, acknowledging that it happens in our communities is the key thing. Firstly, just opening your eyes and knowing that this is happening to people around you. Look out for it on your high street, look out for it on your road, learn to spot the signs. Are people 
doing strange things in a house down the road from you? Are the curtains always closed? Are you seeing people coming in and out at strange times of the day? If you can just keep your eyes open and look out for it, you can help save a life. We all have a role to play.